I am uh, Jorge Jimeno uh, from Center for Innovative uh, Education. I am in charge of uh, institutional and inter international relations over there. And what we are doing is intensify good practices uh, on innovative education and trying to implement it in other mainly European regions. And this is one of them. The following project is a personal development program designed to support young people overcome the challenges that they might be facing at that particular time. Really passionate about the idea of using the outdoors to help people learn about their, their capabilities and learn a bit about themselves. A lot of challenges, the feeling of, I really don't know if I can do this or not, and being able to do it is just fantastic. And how that can be transferred into the everyday life and how that can be beneficial in their future jobs in the workplace. We can see very clearly on a day-to-day -day basis that the young people are gaining self-awareness, building confidence, um, and getting a better idea of what their skills and strengths are. A really, really powerful process and a fantastic one to be involved with. Thank you. Um, I want to see you, uh, to show you, sorry, how looks like the video behind. So how you make a consortium capable to win and capable to uh, um, make or bring positive outcomes. Uh, first of all, if we want as an institution create a consortium or be part of one of, uh, of them, we need to think in two ways. Yeah. First of all, the most important thing, the funder prior priorities. If we are talking about our ministries or the European Commission or the EA grants or other kind of uh, funds, first of all, we need to fit in here with our idea 100%, not 98, 100%. And secondly, we should respect as much as we could our institutional priorities. So for example, if we are a university of um, social sciences and we do have the opportunity to be part of a partnership uh, for universities but specialized on I don't know, food resource, uh, should we be over there because of the money or we should just pass and look for another opportunities? So we should be as honest as we can with our own strategy and with our own priorities in terms of, in terms of institution. <coughs> Why, hello. Why are we choosing these partners? So we know that we find our fund, we can afford to, or we want to afford um, 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 the creation of a consortium or to be part of a consortium, and now we are looking for our partners. In this case that you show, uh, we are implementing the uh, Edinburgh's model created by uh, University of Edinburgh and Venture Trust, a charity from Scotland that are practically uh, using this method for uh, help young people with, uh, with problems to, to get back to the, let's say, normal society. And we are implementing this model in Ireland, Poland, and Spain at the same time. So we choose the expertise, which in this case is the Edinburgh's model. We knew, because we, know, uh, we, knew, uh, we met them before, that this model goes very good with the funder prior priorities, so with the Norway funds priorities, to find a model that will effectively counteract needs phenomenon. So young people that are not studying, not working. We need, or we choo uh, choose also um, partners by structure. So we create two different models, three different models, sorry, of partnership. One for Spain, where we, uh, when we have um, a local government, a regional government, Cantabria's government, and a company specialized in uh, contract unemployment. Uh, in Ireland, we uh, take the Limerick Institute of Technology, so it's a polytechnic, much more like technique and uh, vocational education, and very uh, fit in the land, so with a lot of contacts with the social partners that we will need, uh, need. And in Poland, the food banks and ourselves, so trying to make the same through a third sector perspective. So as you can see, for our, uh, for from our part, 
the cross-sectoral approach is also a key element. So we uh, checked governmental side, academical side, NGO side. Definitely, until now, uh, the best one is the governmental side because they have the bigger amount of tools. Um, so we had the structure, we had the, the expertise, but we also had the prestige. It was specially for us uh, to choose Edinburgh University because we knew that Center for Innovative Education just don't have the name and the brand enough to win a four million euro uh, proje uh, project. So this is why we show that in fact we are taking in direct cooperation with them a model that exists and it's, it was developed by the 24th university in the world. And friendship. This is something that occurs very usually and it's not such a good idea. I mean, we used to work with several partners. Partners are people, we like people, so we like to work with people that we like. But this doesn't mean that these people are the correct partner for this project. It's not like, I like you, we will work again together. And in here you have most or a lot of surprises, uh, surprises in terms of critical situations inside of partnerships. Finally, how we will work together. We, in the Center for Innovative Education, believe that consortium is a new institution. So it's like a joint venture. So we will have, again, communication department, research department, uh, merit department, and so on, instead of this approach, individual work of the partners. So you will do this part, you will do this part, and at the end, we will put everything together probably it will be good enough. So, how to manage a consortium? This is uh, also a very standard approach. Yeah? It looks funny for me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how to manage a consortium? Again, not based uh, in academical world, I know that we should put here, develop a common strategy, ha have a common agenda, uh, budgetary issues, and so on, so on. So this is not the theoretical part of it, this is the practical part of it. So, for us as leader, being much smaller institution than, uh, than our partners, and in charge of all the project, so not only the people who are there to help our partners regionally, so in all these four countries, but also the people who need to speak with Brussels and Norway in terms of how are we proceeding, how are we doing, how are we showing the effects of our cooperation. These four here are the main difficulties uh, in terms of management. So first of all, cultural differences. It took like three months until we showed or we discover among all the partners that we have problems with communication because for example Spanish people hate uh, big letters and Irish people hate red letters. Uh, I mean yeah you understand me properly. So if you have mails as for example from our side just to remark one thing using big letters and red letters, it was like a civil war inside of the partnership. <laughs> and for us, it was only to remark that this part is quite important. Just that it, we love you, you are going really well, but we only want to show you. So cultural differences started in a mail, but are all the, uh, in all the parts of the project. So we need to adapt one model for three different, uh, different countries and we need to be extremely adaptable and el extremely elastic in terms of how we will face all the challenges and all the outcomes that we will sign in a document with quite serious people that will deliver for sure. So it's like non-stop uh, adapta adaptation and we need to be in each detail. Language, language is different. Uh, 
language differences, sorry, like this, for example. As you can see, I am not an English speaker. Um, Spanish is my mother tongue and also Polish. So uh, this is also important. I mean, first meetings were an Aidmar. We have Irish in the room, we have Scottish in the room, and we have the rest. And it, wa it was like 20 minutes for a Polish to think or to say something that for an Irish is like two minutes and a half. So how you can manage this communication having the knowledge that you really understand each other pretty well. And it's not everything in the mails because most of time there is such big amount of information that it's impossible to have it here, everything at the same time. Load of work. You know, or you need to know, that this month one partner will work more. But next month, this partner will have an audit, will have another project, will have, I don't know, exams in terms of uh, universities. So just don't try to push them hard, Ad accept it, and move forward, and be prepared to move forward in such a scenario. And adapt yourself to decisions change, where, for example, with the government is the worst part uh, of the partnership. Because, for example, we need to make audits every six months, but we had last year um, elections, regional elections in Spain. So our regional partner changed all the directors, ministries, and so on. So they need to start the, procedu uh, the procedures for audit again. So now we have a kind of blind discussion between one government and the, and, and the other one, talking about why you are not doing audit and why I cannot make the audit. So it's like these kind of small surprises are everywhere. So from the very beginning when you are planning a partnership, you should take also in consideration how the decision chain uh, looks like in your partner. And finally, how to manage critical situations. A lot of them. In fact, a partnership is a critical situation. You can just define it like this. The very beginning is very nice, mainly the kickoff meeting when everyone is smiling and uh, we have the nice dinner with nice wine because everyone wants to make the best uh, presentation of him or her. But when you start to work, it's a critical situation. So we need to be adaptable. Forget about your own rules. We have partnership rules. So we need to be there for each new situation with an out-of-the-box perspective. Because if we start among partners to say, no, no, but my statute uh, say this, and my rules say that, it's impossible to move forward. Consensus. Sacrifice. You can make the best budget ever, but you will always forget at least 10% of workload. So you will need to sacrifice your budgets, your people, yourself to make it possible, to make it a success. And finally, empathy. Remember the red dots and the big letters that I, uh, that I uh, speak at the beginning? For us, it was like an extremely surprise. And for them was, why are you attacking myself so deeply? So yeah, empathy is something like it's extremely important. I don't know if this helped uh, you or not, but I am very happy to share this experience with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>